Mr. Burge? Thank you, Mr. Chief Justice, and may it please the Court. Respondents are not saying we're not ready yet. Uh, respondents are really echoing the questions that, that Justice Breyer was asking. Uh, this case isn't about how to define marriage. It's about who gets to decide that question. Is it the people acting through the democratic process, or is it the federal courts? And we're asking you to affirm every individual's fundamental liberty interest in deciding the meaning of marriage. And, and I think this whole case really turns on the questions that Sorry, Justice Alito asked. nobody's asked. taking that away from anybody. Every single individual in this society chooses, if they can, their sexual orientation or who to marry or not marry. I suspect even with us giving gays rights to marry that there are some gay people who will choose not to, just as there are some heterosexual couples who choose not to marry. So we're not taking anybody's liberty away. But we're talking about the fundamental liberty interest in deciding the question of what marriage means. And well, I don't know that that's — I mean, sure. leaving that to the side, I thought that I heard the answer to the question being given in respect to tradition, the 2,000 years, and, and uh, the democratic uh, ballot box and so forth, was quite simple. What I heard was, one, uh, marriage is fundamental. So, so therefore, I'm asking — there I put a long question, but it gives you an opening to say what all those reasons are. Justice Breyer, those answers, one and two, are not Mr. Our Bursch, answers. Mr. Bursch, I understand that argument. It's the principal argument that you make in, in your briefs, that same-sex marriage doesn't advance this state interest in regulating procreation. Are you saying that recognizing same-sex marriage will impinge upon that state interest, will harm that state interest in regulating procreation through marriage? We are saying that, Your Honor. Now, obviously, under rational basis, that's not a question that you need to decide. But, but, but even leaving that aside, um, well, how, could that, how could that be? Because all of the incentives, all of the benefits that marriage affords would still be available. So you're not taking away anything from uh, heterosexual couples. They would have the very same incentive to marry, all the benefits that come with marriage. But they do now. Justice Kagan and Justice Ginsburg, it has to do with the societal understanding of what marriage means. And when you change the definition of marriage to de-link the idea that we're binding children with their biological mom and dad, that has consequences. So, you know, for example, a reasonable — do that. I, That's the problem. If, if marriage I, doesn't do that um, on any level. How many married couples do fathers with the benefits or the requirements of marriage walk away from their children? And so it's not that the institution alone does it and that without it, that father is going to stay in the marriage. He made a choice. I would say that it could, I could, should be gender neutral. Some mothers do the same thing. But my point is that I'm not sure — how I get to the point that Justice Breyer is making, how does withholding marriage from one group, uh, same-sex couples, increase the value to the other group? Justice Sotomayor, there's all kinds of societal pressures that are already delinking that reason that the state advances for marriage, keeping kids and their biological moms and dads together whenever possible. Excuse me. Do, do, do you have to answer that question? Uh, under rational is, basis, Is it we your don't. burden to show that uh, uh, it, it, it will harm um, um, marriage between a man and woman if, if you allow uh, two men or two women to marry? Is that your burden? I thought your burden was simply to show that that the state's reason for this institution is a reason that has nothing to do, that is inapplicable to same-sex couples. J Justice Scalia, you're exactly right, and that's well, why we, we prevail. Yes, but I, but I, I want to answer your question, if I could. I don't think that that's right. I think before something as fundamental to a society and to individuals as marriage, before an exclusion of this kind can be made in that institution, the state needs some reason for that exclusion. And that's why I'd like to answer you an, a real opportunity to tell me what that reason is. Yes. What I, is I, the reason for the exclusion rather than the reason for the non-inclusion? 